previously on the Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. It's a little hard to imagine Lord Fancy playing with something like this. <laughs> Yay! He's like a little miniature version of himself in Naruto. He's like, stupid Nifinese, I don't like you at all. Ah, uh, but we'd be best friends. No, shut up. You're stupid. Blah, blah, blah. Why are you so mean to me, Lord Van Seeks? No reason. It's not like I'm infatuated with you or anything. Really? Because I am. What? Yes, I love you, Lord Van Seeks. You're right. And I love you. Mm. Uh, Lord Van Seeks. Oh, where did you come from? You, you dirty Nifinese. You, I tell you what. Just, uh, get, get out of here. Get out of here. Oh, why? Uh, why does he hate me so much? I don't understand. <laughs> and now back to licking it, people. Help! Sneako B. Back with some more of the greatest attorney to resolve. When we last left off, Greg says, Mother freaking dead. He's freaking dead. And you killed him, penguins. How could you freaking kill him? You sick bastards. What the heck? He was in the prime of his life, too. Ah! But yeah, that was a. Uh, that was surprising. I, I will say, I am really shocked that Gregson ended up dying. I mean, granted, they definitely, looking back, they definitely raised some of his death flags, but I definitely imagined him having some main character immunity there, right? Like, yeah, he was saying, oh, I'm leaving and I'm heading to France, but I, I always assumed that he'd stick around because, one, he's an original uh, Sherlock Holmes character, right? I mean, granted, <laughs> I mean, John Watson's dead as well, but... All the more reason why, like, we're going to kill off another major character. So it's, it was kind of hard for me to imagine that he wouldn't show back up. It's assuming, like, I mean, this is the last game, supposedly, of the Grace Attorney uh, series, right? So it wasn't unimaginable that maybe if this ended up doing well, if they ended up coming back to it, you know, if he, he could come back from Paris and visit us or, or whatever. But seemingly, no, this seems to be actually his death i'm pretty sure they would not go the route of like oh he's pretending to be dead i i don't think that's where this is going this this definitely seems like no he's he's dead <laughs> i don't think that would be something he could hide from like literally everybody i've heard he was dead but nobody's actually seen the body <laughs> hmm though that said i guess we did have the same exact thing happen with a sogi as well but that was a little different because the only person on board who had the uh, the training to probably be able to tell if the body was deceased or not was Holmes, and he was the one who told us. But here we have literally an entire country full of uh, the Scotland Yard and police. So uh, yeah, I, I don't think that's the case. And honestly, I, I hope it isn't. I, I I really, as much as I did really like uh, Gregson, I feel like it would be a little, I think it'd be a little weak to just have him just like, ah, oh, I'm just kidding. It was doing it for this investigation, you know, especially when we've already kind of pulled that card before. And honestly, I, it seems like in a lot of ways, this is kind of a passing of the torch to now Gina being our go-to uh, detective, which I think is good. You know, I, I do actually like that. The idea that she really did kind of end up being his protege and the fact that she was so like, just so bereft at his death to really, oh man, really hits you right in the feels, you know? Cause it's something, that's not really something you saw from Gina a lot, right? That level of like caring so much about somebody. Especially since she sort of tends to keep all her emotions kind of bottled up. The same goes for Holmes as well, who start blaming himself for his death, which, yeah, it's, mmm. It's a lot of mysteries here, though. I did come up with something, though, and I, I, this could be completely off base. I wouldn't be surprised if I'm completely full of shit about this one. But it is something that did sort of occur to me, because we end up coming across that photo, right, of the, uh, the woman, uh, Mrs. Vigil, uh, in a room of his. Seemingly that, seemingly that room was his. I must, I think that room was like a room that he rented out to, to work on cases in private. And I had a thought, is it possible that Gregson is actually Mr. Vigil? Is that, like, super ridiculous for me to, to think? The only reason I think that is, like, I think the shape of the guy's head is sort of like what Gregson's was a little bit. Like, I'm trying to imagine if I shaved his beard, would he look like Mr. Vigil? Now, here's the thing with that, right? One, did, I can't remember, did Gregson actually show up in the last trial where he was the detective and he was, like, on the stand? And I, I don't remember. <laughs> Uh, but he probably did. And if that is the case, that would be kind of weird because he was on the jury there and she seemingly thought this guy was a warden at the jail. I think she probably would have said something. The other thing, of course, is that if that was the case, why would that be a secret? And how would the wife not know about it? And I, I don't know, there's a lot of holes in this. I, I think I'm barking up the wrong tree here. I was just kind of thinking like, why was the idea that we, we were shown this picture, the sort of like theming around it was simply like, this guy is very plain looking and look how plain he is. And I was just thinking, well, maybe it's just because he had his beard shaved off. I don't know. I got to look at it. I got to see like, 
uh, what the guy looks like again. Maybe imagine him with a beard and then maybe compare it to Gregson if he's in my case file. I don't know. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. I think it might be more believable if Gregson was like her mistress or something, or maybe it was like someone that she, he knew in the past who uh, they met up at some point. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. It is kind of weird though. What, why he has a, a picture of a younger uh, Mrs. Visual. By the way, uh, also you guys clarified and uh, I'm a knucklehead. What else is new? Uh, yes, the guy was Scottish, not Irish. Uh, and also, Outlander is Scottish, not Irish. Just how much attention I was paying to in that show. God damn. I'm sorry. I, I generally get those. I can get those accents kind of mixed up a lot, which to any of my Scottish or Irish viewers, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. They do have very similar kind of a dialect. I know they're definitely not the same. They are definitely, they're very different. I'm just a ding dong sometimes. But hey, at least I was right that it was like Outlander. I was just wrong about what Outlander was. <laughs> uh, but anyway, last episode, uh, Kay Amal said, Looks like Nico has a hard time remembering things from past cases. I wonder if he remembers how the bodyguard died in third case of Apollo Justice. If only they showed us the costume reminders of the craft photo from during that game. <laughs> yes, thank God. Thank and, and, otherwise, I, I probably would have forgotten all about that guy and his his painful last breath. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Oh, remember it again. Remember it show it one more time. Ah, ah, I'm stuck in a never-ending cycle of death. Ah! Which I will say, this actually, this comment does actually make me realize something um, else about this game that I've, I've honestly only after reading that comment today, it sort of hit me. Um, something that this game uh, doesn't do that a lot of the previous games did is that it doesn't overdo its flashbacks. Like it will still, it still has flashbacks for certain, but it doesn't show like the same scene like fucking four or five times during a trial generally I, at least i haven't noticed it while playing it you know and god knows the previous Ace attorney games would show some of those same flashbacks so many times so many times to the point where i did notice it what i'm trying to say is that these games are way better paced than the previous Ace attorney games like these games feel like they actually value the player's time and they're not like just treating you like a fucking idiot like you didn't remember that that shit from that long ago i really feel like these two games have really just been hitting in all cylinders you know with very few moments where i've ever felt like like that like, felt a little off or a little stupid or a little like drawn out and i think that's why i really have been enjoying these games so much but uh cable thank you so much for your hilarious comment and it's for that reason you are comment of the day but all right guys now to move on to the trial and I do actually wonder in this title here for Twisted Karma and his last bow. I wonder if the last bow is like Rexon's last bow and Twisted Karma. I don't know. It's like, I, I feel like these the names of these cases have actually been really fucking good, you know? And sometimes you don't know what the title is insinuating or what it means until like the very end. Uh, it's been very satisfying, like seeing everything, like seeing it come to fruition. Like it's funny because the, the tiles have seemingly been surprisingly revealing in what is going to happen, but you don't really get it until you have, until you have the context, all right? All right, let's go save Daddy Zeke's. He's been framed. I have no idea who the, the, the potential killer of this would be then. Um, okay, before we look into this, I just want to do this while I'm thinking about it. Uh, hold on. Gregson, are you actually in here? No, he is. There he is. Uh, uh, look about Gregson, though, is that he has, like, no chin. This guy definitely has a chin. N uh, no. 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 Definitely not the same guy. Like, I kind of thought that was probably off. The problem is that I couldn't actually, see, from the main menu, see what this guy looked like to get to remember exactly how similar they were, but nah. They are not the same guy i can't imagine in five years this guy's hair would have gotten this much grayer not it, it's it curls his does not curl no it's just it's not the same guy <laughs> it's not the same guy all right uh november 2nd 8 56 a.m the old bailey defendant sandy chamber there's that old familiar feeling again the crushing pressure of this historic courthouse oh it's fucking demon energy uh actually no it's a little different today there's even more menacing tension in the air. There's a menacing tension in the air here today, isn't there? I suppose. Yes, I think so. That's what I was just thinking, Susan out! Get out of my head, Miss Susan out! Hello there. It's kind of weird being here next to you and not like hating your guts all the time. This is what it feels like to be a defendant of yours. Oh, wait, wait, no, here comes the hate again. Never mind. It can only be the result of the menacing appearance of the defendant. 
a little more courtesy, if you please. Oh my, I, I do apologize. Uh, however, you're certainly not mistaken that this trial is far from ordinary. What do you mean? Really, you're asking me what I mean? I'm here, you're defending me, stupid! By the way, I saw you guys bring up a very interesting uh, sort of evolution here that we've seen. So, uh, Asogi, who was originally the victim of a case, has now become the prosecutor. The prosecutor, uh, Van Zeeks here, has now become the defendant. Gino Estrada, who was previously a defendant, is now a detective. Inspector Gregson, who was the detective, is now the victim. We've gone full fucking circle. <laughs> wow. That's pretty cool, actually. That's pretty cool. That's some role reversal, I'll tell you right there. That's a game of role musical chairs. I'm not privy to the details, however. I understand that no jury has been selected. What? A trial without a jury? What do you think this is, Japan? Well, well that's just like the trial of professor, the professor 10 years ago. A closed court. Oh. Oh, okay. So, we're, okay, well, that's it. We're, we're going that way's direction. So, this is going to be like a closed trial. Because I guess they don't want people... Wait, is it is the word out that Van Zeeks is the one that did this? I think it kind of is, right? That That's what uh, uh, Lord Strongheart was saying, that the people want answers as to, like, what, what happened to the people that died before. Like, no, I think it's... Yeah, it's public knowledge. I guess they're thinking maybe ahead, like this discussion we're going to have today might air some dirty laundry that we do not want the public to hear about um anyway good morning my dear fellows mr holmes have you made note of my hair mr Arahudo? it outright victory for science you must agree <laughs> to be perfectly honest so much happened yesterday that well i completely forgot about your little hair problem ha what to one man is a little hair problem is to another a day of drinking dubious potion after dubious potion. <laughs> you have no idea how much my stomach ails me this morning. Oh dear, how awful for you. I'm afraid you only have yourself to blame, Mr. Holmes. And good morning to you, Mr. Reaper. I'm delighted to see you looking so full of vim. And I, you. I see London's celebrated great detective is as active as ever. Oh, you exaggerate, my dear fellow. Compared to my paltry engagements with a few trivial cases, the Reaper's overbearing presence is a far greater deterrent to the black roots of crime in our capital. And whilst I may not agree with your methods, there is at least one point in which I would readily commend you. What an honor. And that would be... Your eye for a good lawyer, sir. Well, technically, he didn't really pick me initially. Shut up! I'll say my compliment, all right? Mr. Holmes. After all, behind this lawyer, there's a very great mind. My own. <laughs> what are you trying to say? I wish only to say that you should be prepared for quite a trial, Mr. Reaper. And again, this isn't even the last one! I keep thinking this is going to be it, right? This is, this is the last case. No, guess again. We still got one more. Uh, sorry to barge in. Hello! Gina! What's that in her arm? It's a morning band, I suppose. Aw. Father, shouldn't you be at the symposium? Well, I mean, there's a lot of shit going on down here, so figure I might as well come down and show everyone my sick drip. It's been postponed, so I have some free time. I decided to come along with a police inspector to see our country's up and coming student in action. Ah, crap. No pressure. You're talking about me, right? Not Sogi. <laughs> I should be very interested to see the fruits of your studies over the past half year. Well, it's an honor to have you here. So there are some fruits to see. Gina's sad. Auto. Oh, yes, Gina. Why do you agree to this, eh? Why'd you take him on? This, this Reaper bloke. Everyone says it was him, what? What killed the boss? I'm sorry, Gina, but I just don't believe that. Well, if it weren't him, who was it? I don't know that yet. That's why we're here. I don't care who calls him what. The Reaper's just a name. He's just a person at the end of the day. And if it turns out it was him, we'll kill the boss. Then God help him. 
I'm standing right here, you know. Fiery eyes, indeed. Yes, the culprit deserves every ounce of your loathing. Eh? At least, that may be of some solace to the deceased. Oh. B please, Otto. Get whoever did this. Or the boss. Oh, Gina. I ain't feeling this useless. But there's nothing I could do. So you gotta find who done this and make the wretch pay. Castle the defense to defend it. Oh, oh, wow. It's really serious in here. You know what? I'm not even gonna be goofy this time. Just get your booty patooties in here. The court will be in session shortly. Make your way into the courtroom at once, please. All right, then. Here we go. It's time, Mr. Arahoto. Lord Van Zeeks. Hello, I'm in your thoughts now. <laughs> Damn, fancy, he's looking good today. I mean, oh God. One who lost his treasured brother to a mass murderer. One who lost his treasured father in a foreign court of law. And one who lost the man who helped her escape destitution. All that misfortune, all that pain, on course to collide headlong in this trial. It's time to shine a light on all these dark events. And whatever truth is revealed, we're going to have to look it straight in the eye. I can't imagine we're getting it all done in one court session section though, all right? I, I can't imagine. We still haven't done Holmes' dance of dis deduction and shit. Uh, November 2nd, 9.20 a.m., the Old Bailey Courtroom. Wow, it's really quiet in here. In the name of the Majesty of the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. Wow. It's weird. It's really weird ha having an audience and a jury and a prosecutor without massive legs. We are here to conduct a fair and just trial of the defendant Barack Van Zeeks. Man, I never thought I'd see this day. Counselors for the defense and prosecution, are you ready to begin? Defense is ready, my lord. All right, I'm going to ellipses because that's what everybody who before me does this. Whenever there's a new character up here, I got to I got ellipses, right? You've already fucked up, Asogi. Damn it. The prosecution is more than ready. Oh, Kazuma-sama. God, he looks good. He sure does. I've been wishing to see you in court again for so long, it feels. But I never pictured it happening like this. I never thought I'd be facing you behind the prosecution's bench and without my sword. Seriously, you don't need two swords, dude. You are gonna just keep the other one. I thought maybe he'd like give it back to me or give me his other sword or I don't know, something. The so-called Reaper of the Bailey has been a scourge like no other, undermining Her Majesty's justice system by murdering every sick fuck out there. God bless him. Today, we must uncover the truth by this scourge. In other words, this trial is going to be a lot more far-reaching than Inspector Grex's murder. The truths revealed by these proceedings may have unpredictable unpre repercussions through the judiciary. Accordingly, they are to be conducted as a closed trial with no members of the public present. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's really the reason. It's not even just this. It's the fact that whatever happened to all these other guys. I was trying to think, like, what would they say that Van Zeke's motive was for killing Gregson? And I'm thinking what they're going to say is that Gregson was on to Van Zeke's, like, reaper reaping everybody, right? And in order to stop him from, like, uncovering the truth or whatever, he he was forced to kill him. And then again, that and that would if that motive would also then tie into potentially all the other deaths to the Reaper. By Your Majesty's direct orders. How will that work, my lord? The burden of all arbitration and adjudication falls on my shoulders. Therefore, as you will see, it's basically just like we're back in Japan again. The jurors bench shall remain vacant today. Max Payne's gonna pop out. Hello, I'm here now too! Ah! No members of the public are present. May I ask who is currently occupying the gallery, my lord? They are members of the judiciary. Oh, no, we have people here. Okay. Oh, good, good, good. Otherwise, what would happen then when shit hits the fan and nobody says anything? What would happen? I'd just not slam my gavel? And then do a big freak out like, order, order! I can't let that happen. It's supposed to be a poignant moment. If it's just silent, it'll be all awkward and weird. They are members of the judiciary here to witness the proceedings and ensure an equitable trial. Members of the judiciary. Oh my, it's a very unusual trial already. 
There is, of course, another unprecedented aspect to these proceedings in which I must elaborate. The counsels for the prosecution and the defense are both aliens of Great Britain. Yeah, that's kind of a weird one, right? I believe it takes an outsider to see the truth sometimes. And as I stand here in this courtroom now, I'm quite certain. This is the reason why I had to come to Britain. Kazuma? Very well, let us commence proceedings. Prosecutor Asogi, your opening statement if you please. We see some new Sogi animations? Certainly, my lord. Behold! The incident took place on November 1st at just after 5 o'clock in the afternoon. The location was a building of flats on Fresno Street on the outskirts of the city. The victim's body was discovered there in an old single-room rental property. Yes, Inspector Tobias Gregson, a name known very well indeed to this court. Not least for his miraculous resolution of one of this country's grimmest cases ten years ago. The Professor case. How sure are you about the time of the incident? Several witnesses on the street outside heard the gunshot, and all have reported the same. Yes, that's what Gina told us too. There were a number of witnesses. I have here a plan of the room. The victim was found curled up in one corner. It's believed that he was shot from the, fr the front at point-blank range and died instantly. Hmm. How has the range been determined? There were scorch marks around the entry wound. Such marks are caused by the gunpowder used to fire the bullet. But powder hot enough to leave such scorch marks is only ejected a few inches beyond the end of the barrel. In other words, it only happens when the target is at point-blank range. I see, yes. Thank you for the detailed explanation, Counsel. Okay. Inspector Gregson's autopsy report saying that the death was instant, resulting from a bullet shot at close range. Okay, let's have a detailed look at it here. Coroner Maria Gori. <laughs> you're the you're the killer, aren't you, Maria? You're gonna show up here and fire everything up again, are you? Just like that last crazy bitch. Uh, cause of death, victim was shot in the chest at close range from the front, resulting in instant death. Scorch marks uh, at point of entry. The bullet exited the body from behind. Uh, additional observations. The caliber of the gun used matches that of standard issue firearms for members of the judiciary. The murder weapon was found lying beside the victim. And have you managed to ascertain the owner of this firearm? No, my lord. Not conclusively. Bravo, Kazuma-sama. For not trying to use the gun as evidence when its provenance cannot be proven. Yeah, go, Cosmo, yeah! Just kidding, it's, it was totally Van Zeeks. Ah, damn it. Furthermore, my lord, as I ex explained, the revolver was fired at extremely close range. The bullet passed through the victim and struck the wall behind him. There is a candelabrum mounted on that wall, and the tip of one of the candles in it was found to have been blown off by the projectile. We noticed that too, didn't we? Yes, that's right. Again, feel like there probably should have been blood spatter, but maybe that would have been going too far. <laughs> They're like, just fucking giblets spray on the wall, like, oh my god! Especially for a character that we've come to know so well. That might have pushed this game to an M rating. Thank you for the thorough report, Counsel. The setting of the crime is clear to me. You will submit the plan of the crime scene as evidence, please. As you wish, my lord. Uh, plan a small room in the building of the flats on Fresno Street where the body of the victim, Inspector Gregson, was found. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure there's not like some shit I can scan here. Is this Fresno Street room Inspector Gregson's private abode? No, my lord. The room is rented to a Mr. Huge Bone. <laughs> huge Bone. Huge Booner. So, yeah, the, the metaphor for this one is obviously Huge Boon, right? Like a great boon, I'm imagining. So, Mr. Hugh Boon. But there is precious little furniture inside, and is generally in a poor state of repair. So, what on earth was Inspector Gregson even doing there? Presumably, he was investigating some case or other. When a policeman was informed of the gunshot from the witnesses and rushed to the scene, he found only the deceased, Inspector, and the accused standing alongside, holding the revolver. Really? Really? He found Van Zeek standing there with a smoking gun? Okay, that's kind of bad. The attending officer arrested the accused on the spot. So, the details of the case are clear. In that case, the prosecution would like to call its first witness. 
A name, please, counsel. Naturally. The accused himself. Uh, Lord Van Zeeks? As a prosecutor, he believes in the oath of office he's taken and will be compelled to tell the truth. Bitch, I ain't no snitch. <laughs> I didn't do it, all right? You're trying to pin this on me, aren't you, Asogi? Yes, piss for all that smack I talked about you not being a good assistant. You're right, I am. And I'm getting my vengeance here, today. Who's a good little sister to now, Enzix? Damn it, not you, all right? I'll say it again, not you. You take that back. Order, order in the court. I'm afraid the defendant makes a good point, prosecutor. You aren't a very good assistant, though. Damn it. Very well, let the defendant take the witness stand. Huh, so that's what it's like to stand up here. So, witness, it's your name and occupation for the court. Oh, for fuck's sake, Asogi. <laughs> you know who I am, dipshit. Brock Van Zeeks, Old Bailey Prosecutor. I presume, Lord Van Zeeks, that you heard Prosecutor Asogi's opening, uh, precis. I did. It is alleged that you were found at the scene of the crime, and that you were arrested by the arriving police officer. Can you confirm this? Yes, my lord. Then I'm sure the court would like to hear you explain some things away. Namely, why you were there in the room on Fresno Street at the time in question. And what exactly took place. I intend to explain away nothing. I will simply tell the truth. I must say, Lord Van Zeeks, I never imagined this day would come. Or rather, I didn't want to imagine it would come. But since you're, you became known as the Reaper, a part of me has been dreading it. Hmm. That was something that you all made up, right? I didn't call myself that. I wonder at some point we're going to get an explanation to as the cross-shaped scar on his face, you know? We, like, don't bring that up, like, ever. Even when, like, talking about, like, his his appearance and, and everything. It's like, I haven't got any indication. It's because, like, we just saw, like, in his older picture here, right? He doesn't have that, that mark on his face. Where did that cross-shaped scar come from? Did Van Zeeks get that back when he was the Potosi? Your formal testimony then, witness. Okay, this should be interesting, because he didn't really bother to tell me anything when uh, I was talking to him before. Uh, the facts of the incident. I was investigating Gregson, and my inquiries had led me to that address. When I first entered the room that day, it was dark inside, and I saw no one. A moment later, I heard the gunshot. I spun around and saw the revolver on the floor. Just as I picked the firearm up to examine it, the door flew open and I heard a man scream. It was only then that the body of Inspector Gregson appeared before me. Oops. <laughs> Damn it. You, you basically be de did the same thing that fucking uh, Naruhoto did. He just like walked in and was like, hey, look a god. <laughs> hey, look a god. Just that like you and I are more alike than you think. No, I'm nothing like you. You shut up. That testimony was the whole truth. It was. So, you heard a shot being fired in a room with no living occupants. And moments later, a corpse somehow appeared before your eyes. Is that it? You're right. You haven't explained away anything. In fact, that would barely qualify as an excuse. Whatever. Fuck you, Asogi. I thought you were my mute apprentice. <laughs> I liked it better when you wore the mask. Yeah, it turns out you have a way with words. Prosecutor Asogi. Hmm. Would appear to be a singular tale indeed. Singular isn't the word. It's laughable. It's kind of into Kazuma. He's not behaving like himself at all. He's all mean and angry. Very well then. Counsel, you may begin your cross examination. Yes, my lord. Okay, everything sounds great. It sounds like it was just an accident. Okay. Well, I guess, uh, I guess we're good then. So we'll just, uh, you're innocent and we're done. Bye-bye. All right. Facts of the incident. Okay. I was investigating Gregson and my inquiries had led me to that address. What were you investigating him for? You were investigating the inspector. What on earth for? I'm not at liberty to say. Sorry? I'd identify a distinct possibility that Gregson was involved in a case I was investigating. Regrettably, though, he was killed before I could secure the proof I needed. Is the court to understand, then, that on the day in question, you followed the victim to the scene? No. I was privy to his movements in advance. How? I stole into his office in the yard and consulted his diary. 
You read his diary, his precious diary? Yes, there was a lot of, most of the entries were about fishing ships and hitting on homes. But there was one, one in there that mentioned the address on Fresno Street noted in 5 p.m. entry. You illegally entered the man's office. In Japan, that alone will cost you a very serious offense. We would cut you down to size. As it does in Great Britain, I assure you. Is that not the case, Lord Van Zeeks? I was aware of the possible consequences. So, in summary, you were investigating the victim. And yet, you refuse to tell the court why. Yep. What you gonna do about it, bitch? I didn't realize British prosecutors enjoy such freedom to choose what to divulge under oath. Ugh, why did I ever think I could defend this man? <laughs> I'm so fucked. When I first entered the room that day, it was dark inside and I saw no one. Had you ever been to the address before? No, never. I only learned of the place as a result of my investigation into Gregson's activities. There was no light inside when I entered, so it was all but impossible to make out anything. But at 5 p.m., the, the sun would only have just gone down. It would still have been reasonably light outside. The room has a window, but it was boarded shut. Very little light found its way into the room from outside, so it was extremely murky inside. I wouldn't have noticed the victim was already lying on the floor. There was no artificial light in the rooms, you say? You're quite sure? I'm quite sure that the part of the room where the body was found was very dark. I have a feeling there was a small oil lamp burning on the desk, though I can't say for certain. Look, Mr. Arahoto. There's a thingy! There's a small disc in the room just here. Yes, I remember. And there was an oil lamp on it, as well as the framed photograph. When I entered the room, I closed the door behind me and started towards the desk to investigate. And what did you find? Nothing. I never actually reached the desk. A moment later, I heard the gunshot. I spun around and saw the revolver on the floor. Hold it! Oh, sweet, I got it. So, who fired the gun? I have no idea. Don't you think I would have mentioned that if I did? I didn't see anybody else in the room. But you say it was very dark in there. Yes, that's right. All I can tell you is, I didn't sense another person's presence. Ah, uh, then it could it be that the gunshot actually received from somewhere outside the room? No, that's out of the question. Oh. Without doubt, the sound emanated from inside the room. I could smell the gunpowder. Ugh, this is going from bad to worse. Damn it, Vincey, why don't you just go up there and lie like all my other defendants? And you say it's the point at which you noticed the revolver on the floor. Correct. And I foolishly picked it up. That was carelessness on my part. Yeah, really. Presumably then, the gunshot you heard came from the firearm that you somewhat hastily took in your hands. In point of fact, my lord, I believe it did not. What? The barrel of the revolver I picked up was cold, and there was no smell of spent powder. Ah, oh, my powers are gone. But, but then where on earth is the gun that was fired? Whilst I would like to oblige you with an answer, I'm afraid I can't. I too would dearly like to know that. Ah, interesting. Ah, fuck you, Zeke. No, fuck you, Naruto. Just as I picked up the firearm to examine it, the door flew open and I heard a man scream. Hold it. A man, you say? One of the witnesses, I presume. That's right. One of the street merchants working on Fresno Street. Who are these merchants? A number of them had set up their stalls directly beneath the boarded window of the crime scene. A match seller, a newsmonger, and a peddler. They've all given statements saying they heard the gunshot. And without thought of danger, they ran inside to see what had happened. Yes, Gina told us about that yesterday, didn't she? They burst through the door with some force, it would seem. Kick that shit open, SWAT style, BOOM! They did, and almost gave me a heart attack in the process. But you're supposed to be the Reaper, dude, come on, bro. The first man to come in immediately noticed the revolver in my hand and fled. So I shot him in the leg. They couldn't go anywhere. A policeman patrolling on Fresno Street heard the commotion and was able to arrest the accused shortly after the incident occurred. Anyway, 
The man's scream drew my attention in that direction. Uh, it was only then that the body of Inspector Gregson appeared before me. Um, what do you mean by that? In what way did the body appear? I honestly can't explain it, but it's the truth. As far as I was concerned, the body hadn't been there until that point. And then suddenly, there it was. Did you perhaps hear the sound of the victim falling to the ground just beforehand? At that moment, what I heard was the sound of the door flying open and the scream of the man who came inside first. Nothing more. Fuck it. Gregson shoot himself? I... Then drop his gun on the ground or something? But no, no, because he's saying that that gun wasn't the gun that actually killed him. That was a weird one, dude. I see. After the man fled, I examined the body. I was stunned to find that it was Gregson. Hmm. Most curious circumstances indeed. How the inspector was killed, or how his body seemed to appear out of nowhere. I have no idea. Objection! Objection! Yeah! Surely the court has heard enough. He's still got his karate chop. My lord, the cross-examination has clearly revealed that the accused, Barack Van Zeeks, is lying on multiple fronts. What? What is that supposed to mean? Good gracious, counsel. The defendant is lying, you say? In his testimony just now, he claims that he failed to notice the victim's body because the room was dark. That's correct. No, that's impossible. As proven by this candelabrum. How does that prove anything? If you examine the tip, the tip of the long candle, you can see it has been blown off by a powerful impact. One would assume that the projectile from the firearm passed through the victim and struck the candle. The problem comes when you consider the other two candles, which are clear, clearly of a different length. Yes, I can see that only the candle that appears to have been struck by the bullet is long. We could reasonably expect someone to have lit all three candles together. Which begs the question of, why only one has it ended up longer than the others? That must be because that particular candle was extinguished when the others are still burning. Ah! That's right. When the candle was hit by the bullet, it obviously went out. Ah. But the other two candles would still have been burning. So the fact is... Wow. <laughs> That's a pretty uh, amazing observation there, Kazuma. But it's sound. Yeah, it makes sense. The victim's body would have been illuminated by the light still thrown by the candelabrum. And the accused claim that he couldn't see the body. Clearly contradicts those facts. Shit. And now to the next lie. There's more? The accused also claims never to have visited the scene of the crime before. That's the truth. In that almost empty room, the police discover something very unusual. A board covered from top to bottom in police documents and newspaper cuttings. Yes, that's right. We saw it too. It goes without saying that the contents of the police documents cannot be divulged. However, they included a number of reports from various historical cases. The oldest of which was from 10 years ago. 10 years ago? What is that thing that happened 10 years ago? I can't remember. This is starting to sound familiar. And there is a common thread linking all of the documents on that board. Indeed. What is this common thread, Council? They all relate to cases prosecuted in court by Barack Van Zeeks. All of them? And furthermore, all those cases are ones in which the defendant was acquitted. Good lord! Interestingly, none of those defendants are alive today. Ah, uh, ah, uh, yep, okay, so th it's exactly what I thought, right? This is the motivation they're going with. That Gregson was, in, was looking into the whole Reaper incident. Right? And I bet he was. I, I bet that is exactly what was going on. He was looking into it, but I, he probably did not believe it was actually Van Zeeks doing it. He was trying to gather evidence and figure out what was really happening, right? But unfortunately, that also would give, you know, if it if they believe that Van Zeeks is the one that did this, then yeah, that would definitely give Van Zeeks a motive to kill Gregson. Interestingly, none of those defendants are alive today because all of them have been sent to their graves by the Reaper. Ah! Oh no. In short, that dingy little room 
is the Reaper's secret hideout and his base of operations. The, the Reaper's hideout? And yet the Reaper would claim never to have been to his own secret hideout. No one would believe that. No, the truth is, we've been looking at this backwards. Oh, he's saying this is hideout? Oh, uh, I, I guess. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. He's saying, he's probably going to say that it was his hideout and then Gregson broke in there. Backwards, explain, Council. Inspector Gregson was investigating the identity of the Reaper. When he discovered the location of the man's secret hideout, he was killed. As I'm sure everyone can imagine. By the Reaper's hand. What? What? No. No, Asogi, that's not what happened. You dumb dumb! Order! 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 Very well. I hereby state the current opinion of the court. Barack Van Zeeks is an outstanding prosecutor who has rendered great service to his country. However, it is with deep regret that I must concur with Prosecutor Asogi's contention that the defendant's testimony exhibits a number of stark inconsistencies with unknown facts. All I have done is state the truth as I know it. Cosmo's done a brilliant job as ever. He's drawing on his experience as a defense attorney to build his prosecution case, and it's formidable. Counsel, you will submit the board that you just showed the court as evidence. I believe it to be fundamental in establishing the facts surrounding the Reaper's existence. Thank you, my lord. Okay, a freestanding notice board clearly covered in notes and articles relating to the victims of the Reaper of the Bailey. Okay. Let's have a little look see doodle Anything just happened to be on the... Oh, of course, there's always, there's always something in the back. Always. And it's a bloody handprint. Look at that shit. Oh, what's this? Mr. Hodo, look. Oh, yes. It's a smudge of some kind. In fact, it looks just like a handprint. And the color. That's blood, isn't it? Well, it ain't ketchup, all right? It's, it's never ketchup. Oh, dear. How disturbing. There's a bloody hamper on the backside. There are details of a whole raft of cases dating back years on here, aren't there? This page from 10 years ago is browning with age. Look. Out of interest, the most recent thing appears to be this newspaper cutting here. Oh, it's the same redhead leak advertisement that Mr. Holmes had picked out. And do you remember? There was a red hair piece of the scene, too. Is Inspector Gregson an exponent of the red headed league, then? Um, and now the prosecution would like to call new witnesses to the stand. Witnesses who saw events unfold on the day in question. They were mentioned in the previous testimony, too, if you remember. Is it going to be the two redheads that we saw before? I feel like there's no way we just brought them in only to toss them aside. Right? Yes. The street sellers who heard the gunshot and went running into the room. Very well. Lead the witnesses in. The defendant may step down from the witness stand. Whatever. I didn't want to be up here anyway. Suddenly, my lord. <gasps> Definitely not. I mean, I get that this guy's like, oh, it's that dude. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> He's back. Once again, this poor man. Was he a jury member or was he like a, a witness? I don't remember, but he was he was in the last game. Um, <laughs> no, these are definitely different. Okay. I, I'm actually curious if those two will show up at some point. I feel like they probably will, right? I mean, right? They have to. They can't just show up for like two seconds. I mean, I know they've seemingly been sent to jail, but come on. So, witnesses, state your names and occupations for the court. What in the hell, dude? <laughs> Call me. <laughs> Should that be my voice for this guy? Wait a moment. Ah, that's fucking stupid. <laughs> I, I don't want to be doing that every time this guy talks. Names. We don't use names. Far too fancy for the likes of this. Yeah, it says all right. Little Red Riding Hood. We're just free and easy, so what we like to live where we want it is. Uh, I'm back. Why? Why do I keep coming back here? I give them all the vacant stairs. They walk down Fresno. It's been a few words in reverse for them. Ah, why would I be right in assuming that all three of you make your living by selling wares on the street? <laughs> Everyone calls me gossip. Actually, jaunty little tidbits by passerbys, you know. Jaunty little tidbits? The fuck is that? 
You got an absolute smash for you, sir. Right up your ginnel it is. Six pence is the price, not a penny less. I'll pass. What? You're you're actually trying to sell it to me now in the fucking car route? Oh, come on, sir. Don't tell me you're not interested. Try the man. Give the money. Give him the money. See what it is. See what it is. You're right up. Pay the man, council. Do it. Do it right now. What the hell's happening? All right, all right. Sixpence it is. Yeah, well, we'll regret it, sir. Now I got your listening ears on. Just between us, a young couple on Slate Street have just had twins. I want my sixpence back. I want it back! Also, you may want to get that lip looked at. Um, is that it? No, that's not it. It's gossip in it. It wants to spread. But that bit's up to you. In your mouth, of course. Now, I've got more, you know. Well, another juicy one. Sixpence a piece it is. You're curious? I am curious, yes. About what's going on just under that fat bottom lip of yours? Namely, that unusual bruise or whatever it is that's poking out from under your collar. Oh, fuck, yeah. Whoa! Sorry, I like it kinky, okay? Don't ask questions you don't want to know the answer to. Oh, God! What about the next witness, then? What name do you go by, and what do you sell? Me, I'm Venus. That's what everyone calls me. Funny, in it? What the fuck is that? Firecrackers? I saw this lovely little fireworks to all the local school kids. Oh, boy. Six pence a pop. What do you say? Oh, God. Oh, God, it's gonna fucking blow. It's gonna blow her fucking arm up. You weren't exaggerating with little. Do they actually sell? Oh yeah, second years can't get enough of me of my Venice craft firecrackers. Especially when I tell them that if they got a hundred, they could blow up the school. <laughs> Not the most savory of ideas, young lady. What do you say then, eh? Want a pop with a six kid piss for a pop? Ah, uh, I wish she kissed me like that. Oh, I mean, what? Uh... Wait, what? Y you want me to buy one? Tell you what, I'll let you in on a little secret. If you get a hundred of them, you can blow up the whole cold room. Try the woman, do it. You want to kill everyone, don't you? Don't you, Arona? Give her the money and see if she's right. Pay the woman, counsel. What the hell's up with you guys today? No! Fuck you, you do it! All right, all right, I'll buy one. Love is stuff right then. This is something a bit extra, just for you. The vein is special. Only 600 a pence. 600? It's 100 of my regular fireworks. Nothing little, little about that, is there? Oh my god. And there'd be nothing little about the punishment if I blew up the whole bailey either. Well, there we go. Uh, Venus Special Firecracker, consisting of 100 small, small, smaller fireworks of six pence. What sort of bang could it make? Okay, so it seems to me then what really happened is he didn't actually hear a gunshot. He heard this, didn't he? Which <laughs> I do find funny because like you think that would be like something she'd keep under wraps. <laughs> like, right? Unless, well, no, it's, it's, I, I was, I was thinking, well, maybe she was, she had a hand in it. Actually, it's probably more that whoever set this up bought that from her, right? That's probably more the case. All right. Let's have a look, see at it. Let's light it up. Have you had an idea, Mr. Naruhoto? You're staring at the end of the, the string of fireworks. Sorry, it's just that it's the Venus special. I was wondering what 600 pence worth of fireworks would sound like. Fucking nuke. Shall we find out? What? But, but she said it could blow up the courtroom. Bang, dead. Uh, all right, that was a fairly sizable bang. But yours are still ringing, Mr. Naruhoto. It sounded almost like... <gasps> It goes off like a gunshot. Hey, there we go. All right. I feel like that was probably something we could have already just pieced together. We haven't even looked at it, but whatever. And the last witness, what name do you go by and what do you sell? Who's your daddy and what does he do? Uh, yeah, I'm a think of me, thinking all sorts of thoughts. Yeah, I think therefore I am. I am therefore I think. Yeah, I think. Yeah, because I stand there on the street watching the world go on about me. They call me the observator. 
Get out of it, old man. Everyone calls you sandwich and you know it. <laughs> sandwich! So, you don't actually sell anything. Oh my god, his name is fucking Sandwich. Uh, pr problem, uh, pr problem, share is a problem, man, is what they say. Uh, give advice, do, and think what it means. Uh, don't actually sell anything, no. Come to think of it. Pity. No more purses today, please. I don't have any more sixpence anyway. Well, we have quite a cast here, it seems. Cast of kooky little characters. They conduct their business on Fresno Street from the morning until night, my lord. And always in the same place, directly adjacent to the crime scene. I see, unless they heard the gunshot, I suppose. Not only that, but they very bravely ran inside to see what was going on and witnessed the crime. Well, I'll be beggared, I thought. Uh, just between us. Venus de Mello, what am I to do? What a terrible thing I saw! <laughs> what I think is, if all we saw, see is light, and shadow playing with our eyes, is any of it real? What the hell, are we in the Matrix? Maybe that Morpheus guy was right after all? Alright, well, you're all just weird as fuck, aren't you? Very well! The court will hear the formal testimony of these three witnesses now. You will describe in detail what you witnessed and heard at the time of the incident. Oh boy, here we go. Ah, the witnesses' accounts. So that lip is... That, you gotta get that looked at, man. That cannot be good. Uh, we saw the whole thing from the start to finish, we did. Everything from the moment they were in the building. It was less than a minute after the Reaper had gone inside and we all heard a big bang. Uh, it seems to me that they're quick to talk and quick to walk. Guys, couldn't wait to go and see what had happened. Ran in, I ran into the room and there he was, the Reaper, a gun in hand, standing over the dead body. I was scared half to death, me, so I ran off to find a copper. If these witnesses were there the whole day and saw everything, who did they see going inside the building? Only the victim, Inspector Gregson, and the accused, Barack Van Zeeks. Yeah, I've seen pictures of the Reaper in the paper. I know what he looks like. And just between us, folk love stories like this. I've made myself a tiny sum already. But wait! The room was just one of several flats in the building. Someone from another flat could have done it. All those flats on Fresno Street are unoccupied. Of course they are. They're small, damp, dirty, and expensive to boot. The room in which the inspector was found is the only property in the building that's currently leased. And we know the leaseholder's name, don't we? It's Hugh Boone. Huge boner man. Hmm. The testimony of the court has just heard would appear to leave little room for doubt. It's becoming increasingly difficult to see how anyone other than the defendant could have committed the crime. No, come on, man! Thank you for your candor, my lord. Counsel of the defense, you may proceed to cross-examine the witnesses. Yes, my lord. In a closed court like this without a jury, the judge is the only person whose opinion matters. Fuck everybody else. I have to break down this testimony. Somehow. Gotta break it there. Alright. Bring it on, Asogi. No, you bring it on, Naruhoto. Okay. Um, I guess we'll start from the top here. We saw the whole thing from start to finish we did. Everything from the moment they went in the building. Good. When you say they, who do you mean exactly? Inspector Gregson and the defendant, Lord Van Seeks. Yeah, I suppose so. Locks of us don't know the names of the High and Mighty. But I'll tell you one thing. It was the old Reaper that went in last, that's for sure and certain. Just behind Inspector Gregson, did they arrive at the same time as each other? No, no, not at all. The first fella must have gone inside a good 15 minutes before he heard the gunshot. The victim arrived 15 minutes before? Are you sure about that? Am I sure? Am I sure? Doesn't seem likely that I've forgotten a fellow with bright red hair like that, does it? Oh. Guys, I will really, really well red, won't it? Better than my flaming fireworks, even. The uh, fiery red mops b b still b burnt on the inside of my eyelids, it is. Wait a minute. You're saying the man was a redhead? Won't you listen, chum? Ah, he was a redhead. And he had a big trunk with him as well. But Spectre Gretz's hair isn't red. Not by any stretch of the imagination. We won! We won, Mr. Arhoto! Yeah, we did it! Yeah, there's no way to, they could possibly circumvent that. If 
fucking contradiction. Yeah. Seems likely the person you saw wasn't, in fact, Inspector Gregson at all, but some other third party. No, I hate to break it to you, but to the witnesses are correct. What? No. Yes. Oh, hey, there's that picture you've been holding out on us. Damn it. Let's have a look at this photograph of the victim taken at the scene. Ah, fucking deadass Gregson. Yes, that's... That's Inspector Gregson, all right. It's all right. We're just checking it out here. And a red hairpiece. Ah. Of course. We saw one on the floor when we investigated the scene, didn't we? I still refuse to believe Inspector Reg Gregson wore a hairpiece, though. So then why on earth would he have been wearing something like that? The Redhead Brigade. Or whatever it's called. Hmm, the color does seem to suit the man, one might say. The photograph will be submitted as evidence, please, counsel. A photographic print of the victim, Inspector Gregson. His body appears to be tightly curled up, and there's a red hairpiece on his head. And what became of the trunk that the red-headed vi victim was supposedly carrying? Damn, there's actually quite a bit of blood. Which I suppose makes sense. He did land on that Heinz ketchup bottle real hard. I was informed that no trunk was found at the scene. So it just disappeared. What? You expect us to have been watching the building every second, do you? I definitely saw him in the dock going in there. No question about that. Okay. Uh, it was less than a minute after the Reaper had gone inside that we all heard a big bang. Hold it! But which presumably you mean the gunshot. You sound a lot like these firecrackers. We love one for you. I saw these other things, don't I? How would I know what a gunshot sounds like? But I've always thought it was probably sounds a bit like this. Doesn't it? And you say that you heard the noise almost as soon as you saw the defendant here enter the building. That's right. It was almost straight away. Bang, you went. Just like that. Well, he's the Reaper, isn't he? It's what the French call a fait uh, fa accompli. When the Reaper's around, people are gold in the ground. I mean, that's what it does, ain't it? I think we get the message. The Reaper couldn't allow the inspector to live after he discovered his secret hideout. There can be no clear motive for the crime. Hmm, yes. It's certainly an eminently credible motive. Great. And at that point, you ran inside. Is that correct? Okay, seems to me that quick talk, quick to talk and quick to walk. Gossip couldn't wait to go and see what had happened. So when Gossip ran to see what had happened, did you go too? Well, me and a bit hampered, see? All the signs, I, I can't move very well. You are way behind, presumably, with that sandwich board around your neck and that big sign in your hand. And what a great burden you bear. Pardon me for asking, Mr. Um, sandwich, but <laughs> Mr. Sandwich. But is it possible that you and I have met before? <laughs> I, I'm not anybody, me. The signs are what make me who I am now. I sign, therefore I am. I am no longer a man, but a son. Okay, whatever. I get it. So, you were employed as an omnibus driver just under a year ago then? <laughs> no, okay. That's that's right. That's who he was. Thanks, Naruto. Oh, he's shaking like crazy now. I might be mistaken, but I believe his trembling has intensified, Mr. Naruto. He's vibrating at a greater speed. Yes, I agree. He's clearly been through a lot. Yeah, turn down King Henry Street in the Black Widow's arms is just there. Oh dear, you made him hide behind a sign and reminisce about the good old days, or the not so good old days. Life is full of surprises, and hey, we gotta reuse his character models, alright? Fuck you. We've got like $10 budget. Okay, ran to the room, and there he was, the Reaper gun in hand, staying over the dead body. So then, you were the first person to arrive on the scene, is that right? That I was. Kicked the door open like a professional, I did. And yelled out, What's going on off there? Lord Van Zeke's claims all he heard was a man's scream, though. And was it dark inside the room? No, not dark at all. There were candles burning on the wall. Really? And there was a fella collapsed on the floor. Just between us, it's the first thing I noticed when I got inside. Ah, uh, 
I see. Thanks. Even though Lord Vanzies claims not to have seen any li such lights on the wall. The next thing I know is someone standing right beside the body. God, I hate how he's flipping his fucking lip. They accuse Brock Van Zeeks. That's right, the pale face repo himself. I was a little shocked. I won't deny it. But I'm no lily livered coward. I stood my ground and gave that reaper a cold heart stare myself. <laughs> this guy's like, no, you didn't. Excuse me. me! Do you have something to add, Mr. Sandwich Man? Would you all like a sandwich? There's, there's really n nothing to me. Empty in the head, I am. Just two slices of no metal. Dude, why are you so depressing, dude? Just let me die. I just want to fucking die anyway. <laughs> so, I don't know what you want, want with me. I think that maybe you just remembered something about sandwiches. Having heard Mr. Gossip's last statement, I mean. <laughs> I think is we're all nothing, really. We're trying to dress ourselves up or something else. We at the end of the day, we're all just street sellers, garbage people, garbage on the inside and the outside. That's enough out of you, sandwich. Keep your traps shut now. Unless you want us to make you a real sandwich, I'm gonna eat you, boy. <laughs> when he saw the reaper, he f f fell clean over on his backside. That's it? No, oh, you rotten beggar. I told you to keep that a secret. He screamed, he did. Screamed like a little weeny bitch. Scrambled all on all fours. So all I wanted to say. <laughs> Mr. Gossip, did you scream like a little bitch and crawl, crawl off on all fours? Is this the truth? The floor was dead slippery. That's why, you know. Mm, Played in my head in a filthy pool of blood, didn't I? Yuck. What? A pool of blood. Oh shit, you got your hand in there? But listen here, even when I was sprawled on the floor, I still kept giving that reaper a cold hard stare. And don't you forget it. Let's just go back a little. Did you say it got blood on your hand? Yeah, I, I did, I eh? Happens to be the best of us at times, doing it, doesn't it? So I was scared, so I slipped over. We can keep it just between us, can't we? No, Mr. Gossip. I'm gonna have to ask you to add that to your that information to your formal testimony, you bitch. Oh, if I must. The witness will amend his testimony to include the aforementioned details at once. Okay. Well, I think we uh, know what to uh, do here. I slipped over and got blood on my hands, so I quickly wiped it off on the floor. Don't you fucking demon lie to me. Don't you fucking demon lie to me. Objection. So you wiped off the blood from your hand on the floor of the room. Are you quite sure about that? Well, uh, well, what else do you expect me to have done, eh? Does it really matter? Objection! Objection! The police found no such handprint on the floor during their investigations. What exactly is the defense asserting? Objection. I'll tell you what I'm asserting, that you're a big meanie, Asogi! You're a meanie! I'd like to pre-revive Asogi better! He was a lot nicer to me! Ah! If you listen, you'll find out, Prosecutor Asogi. Ah! Narahoda, how dare you talk to me like that? I'm clearly the main character of this game. Certainly, there was no bloody handprint found on the floor. What What are you trying to say? There was a handprint in blood left very clearly at the scene. On the back of this notice board. Ah. Uh. Ah! Oh, God, he's twisting his body. Ah, oh, yes, indeed. Indisputably, a handprint in the distinctive color of blood. I oh, did right. That's my right hand. I knew it anyway. Was that thing Objection. falling on the ground then, or something? He seems surprised by it. The witness very definitely said, testified that he wiped his hand on the floor. Any handprints on the back of the board are irrelevant. Objection. Not if the board itself had fallen over onto the floor. In that case, it's quite possible for the witness's handprint to have ended up there. Just look at the floor plan of the room. Yeah. The notice board was in the opposite corner of the room to the victim, and in an up upright position. Even if it had somehow been toppled and was lying on the floor at the time. It would have been a considerable distance from the body. I fell over when I came across the body, so I was basically right next to the corpse, all on the other side of the room. 
In other words, the defense's assertion is contradictory. Yes, it is. No, you're not supposed to agree with me. There's a very definite contradiction here, for which there must be a reason. I take it that you've formulated a proper hypothesis, Council, regarding this apparent discrepancy between the witness's account and the handprint found at the scene. I have, my lord. The discrepancy between the witness's account and the location of the handprint is explained by... Another handprint! The board moving. False testimony. Uh, the board moving. The real contradiction here is the handprint itself, not where it was found. As the court can see, it's upside down. Good gracious, so it is. If the witness had put his hand against the board, the finger should be po pointing upwards. What? What does that tell us? It tells one simple fact. When this hamper was made, the board must have been lying on the floor as I previously suggested. Which means that after the incident, it must have been- it must have been moved! What? Oh my god, that guy's fucking stand. Or else how fucking bent his body was. You're claiming that somebody moved the nose board after the shooting. Then tell the court who! I- I don't know that yet! But the point is... When you consider all the testimony we've heard so far, we can now be very clear on one point. And that would be... The position of the nose board at the time of the incident, my lord. So, counsel, I must ask you to clarify your assertion for the court. At the time of the incident, where do you maintain the nose board was situated? I'm gonna bet right here behind the door. This is the only possible location. Yep. Immediately adjacent to the door, doorway. If the court would think back to the testimony given by the defendant earlier, he said that when he entered the room, it was dark and he couldn't see the body. Oh, yeah. If the notice board had been here, the body wouldn't would have been completely hidden from view and the light from the candles would have been blocked, making the room appear darker. Objection. The accused also claims that the victim's body simply appeared before him. That's true. Or, in his precise words, Just as I picked the firearm up to examine it, the door flew open and I heard a man scream. It was only then that the body of Inspector Gregson appeared before me. Yeah. I don't know about calling it a scream, but he was talking about me and no mistake. Because it was me that kicked the door open. Damn! Or like a badass, like a boss. Yeah, it screamed like a little bitch. If you look again at the floor plan, consider what would happen if the door to the room was thrown open with force. That, that can. The door struck the nose board, knocking it over and making the victim's body visible. Good gracious. My client has told nothing but the truth. He has simply described what he saw. Ah! Oh my god, it's the first time I see a Sogi like make a like a, a grimace face like ah! Order! Order! Council! How has this not come to light before now? After the instance, somebody must have righted the board and moved it. Into the position where the police, myself, and my colleagues saw it when investigating the room. Yeah, who the fuck did that? Witness, what have you to say for yourself? What? Maybe me, me lord. You and your fellows were there at the scene before anybody else. It goes without saying that you must know something about the position of the notice board. The witnesses in the stand will testify again. You will each explain exactly what you did upon arriving at the scene of the crime. Yeah, well, stop looking over your glasses at me. Yeah, I get the message. Ah! I get the message! The mystery of the moving board. I don't know anything about that there, that there nose board. No, I just wipe my hand on it, that's all. Well, don't look at me. I haven't got a clue about it. I was doing business with some second yes at the time. I, I don't know anything about anything. It's just a bystander me. It's just a sign of the crossroads of life, boy. It was that Reaper, I bet. He's gonna face a screams board. I can't see how this changes anything anyway. The detective still died when he heard the gunshot. Hmm. So none of you can elaborate further. 
shaken by the crime they witnessed and with only the light of a few candles and an oil lamp I wish to see. We can't expect these witnesses to be able to give a more precise account of what had happened. That's right, yeah. It don't pay to expect too much. It's my man's endless quest for knowledge that's destroying the world. That's what I think. Do you? Really? Really? In any case, as this testimony shows, even if the nose board was moved by somebody following the incident, it makes no difference. When the gunshot rang out, the accused was the only person at the scene. In short, the only person who could possibly have committed this crime is Barack Van Zeeks. None of this wrangling over the board changes that simple fact. Quite so, quite so. Does the defense still wish to cross-examine the witness despite the circumstances? Most certainly, my lord. Very well, then you may proceed, counsel. Okay. These fucking goofballs, look at them. Look at all you little weirdos. Um, alright. Alright, let's go ahead and hop to this. Uh, I was doing some business with some second years at the time. When you say you were doing business with them, you mean you were selling them fireworks. Yeah, what else? There's a pri private school around the corner, see? This chicken little so-and-so gonna plan to blow the school kingdom come. Ah. So I've been telling on them, letting the teachers know what they're up to. Oh, you have? Yeah, I wouldn't want anyone to get hurt. So let the school know the kids are playing with dodgy toys. Then, praise the Lord, the teachers take all the fireworks off of them. And then, praise the Lord again, the kids all come back to me to buy more. Everyone's happy, see? Yeah. What a racket. Of course, sometimes teachers give me a little bonus to thank me for, thank me for letting them know. It's a busy old life, son, explosives. Venus is a gu guileful goddess indeed. <laughs> a guileful goddess? We tell him if it's lie. Lies is kind of my thing, really. I'm ever so good at it. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, she's a goddess, she is. Um, all right. Excuse me. Excuse me. Now, what is it, old man? Something wrong, Mr. Sandwich. Yeah, I could really go for a sandwich right now. If I said it was, we would just leave it at that. Would that be the end of it? No. Um, no. <laughs> Did Miss Venus' statement just now bring something to mind, perhaps? This guy's a snitch. I knew it. Philosophical thoughts, Steve. Philosophical thoughts. Huh? <laughs> Let's say there was a great liar. And the great liar said without batting an eye. Telling barefaced lies is kind of my thing. I'm ever so good at it. Would those words of hers be a lie to you? Or the truth? In which case, she's... Not a liar. Oh my god. Oh, it's a hellish paradox, that one. Don't you think? My brain. My fucking brain. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. And does it matter? But it seems to me your sister Miss Venus has been lying. Are you? Uh... What are you on about, old man? Trying to cause trouble, are you? Keep on like that. I'm gonna light you on fire, and I'll wrap your whole body in firecrackers and cinnamon. That'll give you something to tremble about. You have a startlingly disturbing mind, man, that sweet and innocent face, young lady. You're like that one girl in that Dark Stalkers game, I think, with a fucking machine gun. I have a feeling I'm gonna be seeing you in court for another case entirely in the future. Probably. So, Miss Venus has lied at her testimony. Is that what you're saying, Mr. Sandwich? Well, if it means I'll be burning hellfire for the rest of my days, so be it. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Can you elaborate, please, sir? Sir Sandwich. Oh, blab mouth here, headed for the room where the gunshots seem to come from. But there was someone else who crept up the stairs behind him, too. That's right. That rotten liar over there. Well, this guy's fucking got a conscience, seemingly. <laughs> Stop kissing those fireworks. Do you mean to say that you did, in fact, betake yourself to the scene of the crime after all? What did I tell you, eh? Whee! I said I was good at telling barefaced lies. 
Didn't I? Yes, you mentioned it. Well, that revelation rocked the whole courtroom, didn't it? Who knew firecrackers pack such, pack such a punch? So you did indeed visit the scene of the crime, did you, young lady? Good grief. Good grief. Well, now you come to mention it, I suppose perhaps. I do clearly remember climbing the stairs to the room, yeah? Either you clearly remember it or you don't. Well, I shall consider a fitting punishment for this perjurious act later. For the time being, you will immediately amend your testimony to reflect the truth. Oh, yes, my lord. Of course. Oh, for God's sakes. Maybe I did sneak in along behind gossip and have a little peek into the room where it all happened. Hold it! You make a habit of lying, do you, Miss Venus? Well, I suppose so. I really, I don't really know, to be fair. If you want my advice, though, I'll take everything I say with a big pinch of salt. All right. But you did, in fact, go to the room where the victim was killed on the day in question, didn't you? Oh, please, as if I would. I can't think of anything more terrifying. The truth, please. Oh, all right, just a bit then. I mean, a girl my age is curious about stuff, you know? Did you touch anything at the scene? Oh, please, as if I would. I mean, there was a dead body on the floor. The truth, please. Well, all right, just a bit then. I had a look to see if there was anything I could sell. So I did give the place a once over. But it was nothing to write him about. Right. Now, I hesitate to ask, but you didn't move the notice board by any chance, did you? Oh, please. As if I would touch anything like that. Just a few bits of loose changes all I had. The truth, please. Well, all right then. I thought there might be something worth having underneath it. So I blasted the flipping thing. So I flipped the blasted thing. Boom! You're, you're telling us that you did move that board! I think that did slip out, didn't it? She doesn't seem to give a fuck, does she? Uh, yeah, you daft bomb poop pot! I, I don't believe it. That girl doesn't think. So, did you find anything then? Something that you might have taken, perhaps, to sell? Oh, please. I should be so lucky. The truth! Now! I might have found this old pocket watch under the nose board, I suppose. But a bit of junk like this can't be worth much of you. Oh. Ah! So it was you, was it? You're the one that took it! Gina? Young lady, may I remind you where you are? That watch! That watch there! That was a present who was about to grasp into the yard! For a big case that sold 10 years ago! The professor case, no doubt. The boss used it to wind up every evening without fail when he was waiting for his grub to come at the pub. I see. I swapped it off and once and Blimey was upset. He gave me a right here for. Said he hadn't missed a day in the last 10 years, bossing and winding it. He meant the world to him. That watch did. Possibly not the best thing to go diving for then. <laughs> It's not all that, Bill. I took it to Jabez that not to ask how much it was worth, but the old dealer wouldn't touch it. Wouldn't give me a penny for it. Said it wasn't working. Knocked about and worthless, he called it. Ah! Oh, I knew I should have lifted it! <laughs> Everybody shut that demon lord up! That watch must be submitted as evidence at once. Oh, please. Just, just so long as you promise to give it back when we're done. Not a chance. I'll swear for you if you try to get your grubby miss on it again. That's enough. Stop stealing everything from every everyone, damn it. And the watch to the bailiff forthwith. Now, now, children. Watch your manners. <laughs> Good lord. The glass appears to be broken. More than likely, it shattered when the inspector was shot. It doesn't take any more either. Which is why it's best didn't want it. What a waste, eh? Yes, indeed. It appears to have stopped at the hour of five. Exactly when the gunshot was heard, then. Which supports the prosecution's claim, of course. Okay. Inspector Gregson's pocket watch, they wound uh, without fail every single day. 
It no longer, it's no longer ticking and the glass over the face is cracked. All right, let's have a look, see doodle. The glass over the face really is badly cracked. Look. What a shame when the inspector clearly looked after it so carefully. I imagine Mr. Holmes could repair it, don't you? Yes, yeah, I should think so. He's very adept at things like this. A useful man to have around, in fact. But kindly remember that he's a great detective, Mr. Narahoto. Not an odd job, man. Whatever. He's also a fucking sculpture, all right? A wax sculpture. He'll do anything for some money. He's a whore. A dirty freaking whore. There's a tiny little stub sticking out from a small hole here. Look. I suppose this must have been a little knob or something on that for setting the time. In that case, seeing as we know the inspector took such good care of this watch, it probably broke when the incident occurred, didn't it? Yes, of course. Which could mean that there's a small part of the watch still at the scene, maybe. Hmm. Oh! Ah, there's a tiny little keyhole here. Can you see? Oh, shit! This is what the thing goes into! Oh, yes. That's probably for the wander used to wind up the mechanism. It looks a little unusual, don't you think? Yes, you need just the right key to wind it, I imagine. But I feel so I've seen something. Something a bit like a key that's about the right size to fit this hole. It would be wonderful if we had the key. Check, check carefully over what we've already found. Okay, here we go. Ms. Suzuto, do you think perhaps this key could be the key for Inspector Grex's watch? Oh, yes, it could be. Let's try it at once. Not a mo that's, there's not a moment to lose. I knew it! A perfect fit. And look, the inspector's watch has started going again. Ah, so it's obviously just not been wound up. That's all. Yes. What is it, Miss Suzuto? Well, the watch isn't actually broken after all. I have a feeling it could have, a, have profound implications. She's in deep thought now. Perhaps I better start thinking deeply too. Shit's not broken at all, damn it! Well, it would appear the mystery of the moving notice board has been solved at least. And as predicted, it had very little bearing on the case. Ah! Uh. Now then, continue with your cross-examination, please, counsel. Okay, does that mean then for right here? She said, he was still died when he heard, heard the gunshot. Objection. Or did he? I'm afraid that's not necessarily the case. Oh, okay. Guess I'll just shut the fuck up then. At the scene, we found this key to the winder of Inspector spe the inspector's pocket watch. A key? And having wound the pocket watch, we discover that it is it in fact still works. You see, the watch didn't stop because it was broken at all. And the and that fact completely undermines one of the most fundamental premises on which this entire case has been built. What? Order, order, order! But, counsel, the watch was stopped at almost exactly five o'clock. Yeah, which is just when we heard the guy gunshot. It is exactly the hour. The time that was showing on that watch tells us nothing other than when it went wound down. It's merely coincidence that it happened to be at five o'clock. Even if that's true, the three witnesses here all heard the gunshot at five o'clock. So that's obviously when this crime was committed. Objection. No, that doesn't hold. Why not? Recall what Inspector Lestrade said only moments ago. The boss used to wind it up every evening without fail when he was waiting for his grub to come at the pub. Said he had missed a day in the last 10 years, pushing it and winding it. I meant the whole world to him, that watch did. The victim was in the habit of winding his watch once a day in the evening. We can reasonably assume, therefore, that he wound the timepiece on the evening before he died as well. Yes, that would appear to be entirely reasonable. But if that's the case, you wouldn't expect the watch to have completely wound down by five o'clock the following day. Oh, hi! How do you explain it then? In summary, 
The evening before the day of the incident, when the gunshot rang out of that room, the inspector was already unable to wind his watch. You, you can't mean. What would stop a man winding his watch if he's been in the habit of winding it every single evening for 10 years? The obvious answer is that he was already dead. Order, order, counsel. That is a most extraordinary claim. Attention. Extraordinary isn't the word. It's absurd. You claim he was already dead the night before. Do you really think that Scotland Yard's coroner would have overlooked something like that? Well, no, not unless she was the fucking killer. That's right. This, uh, wait, 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 where's her name? Uh, this fucking Maria Gory. Fucking Gory is her name because she likes gore. That's right, she's going to jail. No, we've already done that plot point. We're not doing it again. Ah, well, um, on that subject, there's something rather surprising. There's actually an omission in the coroner's report. Yeah. It doesn't mention anything about it. The time of death is not noted. Ah, th that's right. Wait a minute. You're forgetting that my legs went from my, from under me when I kicked the door in. But what do you mean? Like I said, I planted my hand in a dirty great puddle of blood. Yes. So the victim's blood hadn't dried. It was fresh. He catches on fast, doesn't he? Attention. But that blood could be explained in any number of ways. It could have been put there afterwards. Some fresh blood could have been poured over the victim's Objection. body after he... Does my learned friend think that fresh blood is available on every street corner? Learned friend, how dare you call me that? I am your friend, damn it. Ah! Well, it needn't necessarily have been human blood, of course. We've been told previously that Skull and Yard has no way to identify blood as human. The problem is currently being researched. At present, you are correct. It is beyond our abilities. So then, a chicken's blood could have been used, for example. It's certainly a possibility that it wasn't the inspector's blood at all. Objection! But the gunshot was heard at 5 o'clock that afternoon. That's beyond question. Is it, though? Is it? What? Given that... The time of death of the victim has already been called into question. It isn't beyond the realms of possibility that what these witnesses heard wasn't a gunshot at all. Oh, please, what are you trying to say? Us low know what we had. It was a loud bang that came from that there room. Yeah, I got a whip, motherfucker. Wow, what the hell did that cover up? You know, listen here, I'm a street says here's there's livelihood. I'm there li What the hell is that? What, what, I, we have an explanation for that? Now, yeah, whatever. I don't doubt your ears, sir, but all you can say with that, with a certainty, is that you heard a noise. Eh? Explain yourself, then, counsel. A noise that sounds like a gunshot could have been made with. Behold. Take that. Something like this. The culprit could have set off one of these fake these to fake a gunshot. Good gracious! The very fireworks are sold by the witness. Now, hold on a minute. Oh, you're saying I did it? My precious, pretty little fireworks so they make a little pop anyway, see? Not a hundred of them together. The Venus special that you sell for 600 pennies sounds like it. Sounds like this. Boo! As the court can now attest, it sounds very much like a gunshot, in fact. Ah! You're trying to suggest that somebody sent one of those fireworks off the scene. I'm suggesting that somebody knew the defendant was in the room at five that day and sought to implicate him by creating a sound like a gunshot for these peddlers on Fresno Street to hear. Objection. But even the accused himself has testified that he saw no one else in the room at the time. Whether it was a gun or a firecracker, the only person present to cause that bang was Brock Van Zeeks. I'm with a match on and my fireworks go pop. See, it's why people like them. I fear for your fingers, young lady. Objection. Yeah, really. Recently, during my time here in Britain, I've learned of a very useful invention indeed. Something called a, um, a time bomb. Good heavens, a bomb? Yes, a device that allows you to blow up whatever you like, whenever you like. Mr. Mr. Narahoto, I worry that your unfortunate phrasing there may lead to yet another international incident. <laughs> I got out again. God, no, no, no. Wait, it's, 
the whenever you like part that's important, all right? Not this fucking bomb holding in my hands right now. A time device. Yes, exactly. A time device. Something of that nature could have been planted at the scene. A device that was able to produce the sound of a gunshot long after the culprit had left. Your extravagant claim will have to be substantiated with evidence, Council. What proof do you have to suggest in any way that a time device was employed to create the gunshot sound? Uh... Oh, the watch again. You're suggesting this could have been used as some sort of time delay device? I... did think so, my lord. But it's becoming increasingly clear that we've all been very misguided here. Objection. Yes, by you. What? Oh. It's a candle, right? Yep. As the course already discussed, the tip of one of the candles in this candelabrum has been blown off. Indeed, because it was struck by the bullet, which presumably passed through the victim. I don't think that's possible, my lord. Not possible? Why? Because of the scorching. There are gunpowder scorch marks clearly visible on the broken candle. There are? Goodness, yes. But is it not the case that there was also scorching the victim around the bullet and through wound? Yeah, but why then would it wouldn't create a scorch mark on the candle itself? That's right, there was. But as we heard earlier, scorching like that only occurs when the target is very at very close range, a matter of centimeters from the gun. Ah. Uh. Which means that the scorching on the candle can't possibly be the result of a gunshot. You're suggesting it came from the fireworks. How can that be, eh? The fact that there's such visible scorching on the candle suggests that the fireworks must have been right next to it when they exploded. Or, to put it another way, the candle and the firecrackers were joined together. Yeah. The culprit somehow attached the firecrackers at a, at a point partway down the candle. After the killer had left the scene, the candle slowly burnt down along with the other two until eventually it ignited the fuse of the firecrackers generating a loud, a loud bang. Fucking dead. And that is how these three witnesses came to believe they'd heard a gunshot at five o'clock. Man, they really. How do they? How, it's amazing they managed to time that though. To, someone they managed to actually gauge that to to land it exactly. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a lot sort of like. It seems like it would have been had to be planned. Like that, Van Zeeks would show up at just that time, right at exactly five o'clock, walk in at that moment, and that the gunshot would happen to go off the moment he, after shortly after he'd entered the room, right? Like really, you were able to gauge that based on the, like what the melting rate of the candle. It seems like it would have been pretty hard to predict, but I don't know. I guess maybe if you, you did some practice runs and could figure it out. Well, what a plot. And this implies that the victim would, could have died earlier than we've been led to believe. The previous day, even. Now, now. Now just hold your horses. All of us lot here saw the victim go into the building, remember? I couldn't forget that flame-colored hair if I wanted to. The person you saw entering the building wasn't the victim at all. Consider this. Ah! Obviously, anybody can wear a wig. So the person that these witnesses saw entering the building 15 minutes before the incident occurred could easily have been someone else entirely wearing the red hairpiece. Someone else? D do you mean to say? It was the same person who contrived the firecracker trick. In other words, Inspector Gregson's killer! Psh! Ah! Ha 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 ha! Ah ha! Oh, very impressive, Ryunosuke Narahodo. Kazuma? I'm really quite amazed you've come this far. But after all, was I the one who told you that you had all the makings of a great defense lawyer? I also noted the lack of a time of death in this report, a stark omission. But as far as I'm concerned, this whole country's justice system leaves a lot to be desired. No, they're no, just like, uh, what are you, what, what's going on? Order, order, order! Prosecutor Asogi, 
What on earth do you mean by that statement? I hear that many of the leading members of Britain's judiciary are present here to observe this trial today. So we cannot allow even the slightest doubt to be overlooked. The defense's assertion about the time of death based on the victim's stopped watch is just conjecture. But, while the possibility exists that my learned friend may be correct, we have a duty to explore it. Hmm. Well, certainly. I would agree with you. And what immediately comes to mind is, of course, what was Inspector Gregson doing, and where did he go on the day before the incident? Do you know? The inspector always carried out his investigative work alone. His movements were treated as confidential within Scotland Yard. Even within the Yard? However, considering that the evidence we've been presented with so far, I'd say it's fairly apparent what case the man was pursuing. Wouldn't you, my learned friend? I do have a feeling about what case we might have been investigating. Yes, I agree. Surely. My lord, the defense believes it can explain to the court. The case that was being investigated by Inspector Gregson at the time of his death. Very well, counsel. Present your argument to the court. What evidence is suggestive of the case being investigated by the inspector on the day prior to the incident? Yeah, no, it, it wasn't what we thought. It, it actually is. This is not... This is actually his board. It is not... It was not his hideout. Take that! Hmm. I can't see that. I to find it. Oh, no, no, no. Come on. What? Really? Okay, kind of surprised. Uh, oh, oh. No, we're actually not. We're talking about the Red-Headed League. Take that! Yeah. I believe this red hair piece points to the answer. We might assume it was part of a disguise used to carry out an undercover investigation. Surely not. Such a brightly colored hairpiece would only serve to make the head inspector more noticeable. Yes, that's quite true. It would definitely have made him stand out in a crowd. Except, that is, in a crowd of gentlemen from the Red-Headed League. The, the Red-Headed League? So, you had already worked it out. What on earth is this all about? Is there such an extraordinary league of gentlemen? Ah, ha, 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 I see what you did there. Ha. The Red-Headed League is currently under investigation for a grand deception. A deception of what nature, Council? They've been targeting red-headed men across all of London and tricking them out to small sums of money. Two men were arrested for the misdemeanor only yesterday, in fact. Ah. My lord. The defense calls for those two men to be summoned at once. Oh, okay, here we go. D two redheads? No, two gingers? My god! I never thought I'd ever meet one in real life! Inspector Gregson clearly infiltrated the Redhead League using this hairpiece. So it's very likely that he had direct con contact with these criminals. And it's quite possible that such contact led to more serious events. I concur that we cannot in good conscience and leave this new avenue unexplored. Well done, Mr. Arahoto. Well, it's another possible line of inquiry for us at least. Prosecution will make an immediate arrangement for the charged men to appear. Bring these two red-headed league conspirators before me, Prosecutor Sogi. At once, my lord. Very good. We will have a 30-minute recess. Court is adjourned. Okay, good. Perfect. I was like, I hope it ends here. I hope it's not going to keep going. Perfect. Just, just the right size for a regular episode. Maybe even a bit extra long, but it's all good. All right. So, yes, that's that's how they come into play here. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. All right. I still thought that the the stuff on the board, though, was likely Inspector Gregson's doing, not not uh, Van, uh, Van Zeke's. But all right, guys. I think this is probably a good place to end things here for now. Uh, this is getting good. This is getting good. I still feel like we're really only scratching the surface, so I still can't even say, like, do I think it was those two that killed him? No. That'd be so lame. <laughs> no. You think Grex is going to be done in by those two gingers there? The only thing that could possibly kill Grexon is his own fish and chips, all right? The cholesterol from that shit. That's what really did him in. That's the real killer of this case. Uh, but anyway, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave a like and a favorite and subscribe if you're not ready to become Piggy Penguin. I'm with the SLP, where the days are always sunny and the vids are always funny. 
And as always, guys, till next time, stay classy.